Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. This is KY4BDP, Brian, for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Today, we are going to take a look at one of those tools that every ham radio operator usually has in their toolbox, and that is an antenna or standing wave ratio analyzer. In this particular case, we're going to take a look at MFJ's 269CM or the 269C for many folks. There was an older version of this particular analyzer, the MFJ259, and a lot of folks still have that one. They work great. They can work on batteries or external power. In this case, I've got the uh, batteries installed, and I typically use batteries just so it can be more portable. This can measure standing wave ratio for the HF bands, but it can also go up into the UHF for uh, 70 centimeters, for instance, if I wanted to double check a, a two-band antenna like the Comet GP3 antenna that I just recently installed. You can watch that video, and we have a link down in the description, but we have a whole playlist of antennas. In addition to that antenna, there are a lot of antennas that can actually be multi-band antennas. We've actually featured uh, four in our antenna series. The MFJ Octopus, the MFJ Big Ears antenna. We've also featured the Soda Beams Band Hopper 4 uh, multi-band. And we've also featured the uh, Wolf River Coil antenna. These types of multi-band antennas are great because you can use the same antenna for many different HF bands. But when it comes to the SWR, are all the bands are uh, actually giving you the lowest SWR when you hook them up to your radio. And with an antenna analyzer, you can actually check for that sort of thing. And if you're building an antenna like I just did recently, also in the antenna series, the AV640, from high gain, you've got an eight band antenna. Well, how are the bands coming in? Go watch that video as well, the AV640 from high gain, and you can actually see some of the video uh, where we showed you tuning that antenna and what the SWR looked like. So what we're gonna do now that we've kind of introduced this particular tool is just go around the front of this particular uh, box, if you will, the MFJ269. In the top right corner, you have your power button, nice and red, easy to pick up and uh, very easy to turn on. It is protected, so it can't be bumped on very easily, so you pretty much have to click it and with your thumb or finger to get it to come on. It will go through a voltage check. It will also uh, show you, once it does come up on the screen, what is the current uh, values. For right now, we'll turn it back off to save battery. And the LCD display actually comes through pretty well. In this video, not too bad. Out even uh, out in the uh, sunlight, it actually does really well. It doesn't wash out too badly at all. Very easily read. In addition, in this top section, we have the UHF button right here. This one is not protected, but it is a two-position button where you can actually adjust whether you're looking at HF frequencies or UHF. Uh, if you were wanting, for instance, to check the SWR for 70 centimeters, you would choose UHF. Off is out. Also, down here, we have two white buttons right here next to the meters. We have the gate button and the mode button. You can actually use these two white buttons, typically when you're powering on uh, the device, to go into advanced options. Uh, the advanced options, again, we won't cover in this particular video, but uh, you can actually check cable loss, cable length, velocity factor, and a few other items. Also, we have some knobs down here at the bottom. We have our selector knobs for HF frequencies typically. We have the upper range of HF, if you will, where we get into 11 to 28, 28 to 67 megahertz, and so on as you go across the uh, dial. And then in the bottom section, if you turn this little dial to lower range, one more, 
uh, you can actually get into uh, 160, 80, and 40 uh, meter based bands uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, dial in your frequency for those particular longer wavelength bands. And so this will carry or actually allow you to adjust for a broad spectrum of bands, both HF and UHF. And then you have your tuning dial right there. And with this little knob, you can actually go and tune the frequency that you're trying to get the lowest SWR or to see where your lowest SWR happens to be with the current setup of your antenna. In addition, we have some things on the top of this particular unit. We have the BNC connector on the top right corner for a frequency counter input, yet another advanced option potentially for some folks. The DC power in right here. And then we also have a counterpoise connection or ground. And then we also have the actual antenna. Now I've got an adapter connected. Let's go ahead and take that off for just a moment. This has an end connector for the actual cable connections. Uh, depending on where you buy this and the types of cables that you buy, you may already have end connectors. Some people feel those are superior. But in a lot of cases, the PL259 on the ends of your cable are the most common, and the SO239 is what you want on the other end. And so that's the adapter that I have here. You'll notice I can convert that end connector into an SO239 so that the cables that I have that have the PL259 in will connect to the SO239. So 239. On balance, this is a great little uh, uh, tool. And again, there are some nicer ones out there from the standpoint of electronics. And if you're into geeky kind of things and you like to look at graphs, there are some digital based uh, frequency counters and analyzers and SWR analyzers out there. In fact, KY4CKP will be doing a video very similar to this one utilizing a more digital version. But I kind of like the old school meters. I'm old enough to remember VU meters on hi-fi equipment and I kind of wanted to have the, the whole meter uh, option with this particular tool. So let's move outdoors where we can get to those adjustable antennas and let's show us tuning a couple of antennas, well actually three antennas with this particular tool. Be right back in the next segment. Okay so we're back. I'm actually moved into my garage. I'm trying to cut down on the noise coming from the cicadas this year but in any event let's turn on the MFJ 269 and let's see how the octopus on 20 meters is doing. Now what I've done is I have tuned a pair of ham sticks previously and you've seen that in our octopus video we actually use color-coded tape as well uh, KY4CKP and I and you'll notice in this case well we're a little bit high but we're not on frequency either if you go to your uh, ARRL band sheet you'll notice that for a general license holder like myself I'm not supposed to use anything lower than 14.225 so let's dial this down to 14.225 and let's see what we get put on my glasses here the needle is starting to move but notice I'm way down already and if I keep coming, I mean 13.5, I mean I'm way below the band. Now I can get close to 1.2, 1 1.2, which would be good SWR, but man, nowhere near where I need to be, which is on 14.225. So what I'm going to have to do is shorten the stingers on the end of each of those ham sticks on the octopus antenna. So let me go do that and I'll come back and we'll see if I've made any progress. Alrighty, now let's take a look. I've moved the two stingers in on the two ham sticks on the octopus antenna. Notice that I've got high SWR now. Earlier I had 1.2, so let's hopefully go up the band and see if that SWR starts to come down just by moving those stingers on the ham sticks. Well, indeed, it's coming down. Let's see where we come in at here. Ooh, started bouncing back up. Let's go back the other way a little bit. About right there, 1.5. But see, I'm still too low on the band. I, I'm better. I'm closer to where I need to be, 14.225. But I'm not where I need to be. So I need to make one more adjustment to those stingers. So let's make that adjustment and then come right back. Okay, we're back after our second adjustment. And uh, what I've done is I've moved the stingers in 
to about where I had them before. Now I do have that mark, but I wanted to show the antenna analyzer actually picking up this difference. Because when you get the ham sticks, you don't know how much of that stinger needs to hang out on the end. And so what you end up doing is like putting it out as far as you can and you kind of ooch it in a little bit at a time. So let's take a look at the latest adjustment. We're about eight inches in on both sides and we're still at where we were, where we got the lowest SWR just a moment ago. Um, wow. So at 13.8, where we had low SCR, we're back up high again. So we're hoping that as we move towards 14.22, where I need to be because I have a general license, we're going to be where we need to be. Look at that, 1.1. Now that's coming in at about 14.18. That's not too far from where I need to be. And if I come up to 14.225, we're at 1.2. So I have tuned this hamstick. Now, if I come up a little bit, of course, you probably won't be on the very bottom of the band. Look at that. I still have until about 14.330. And if I want to go ahead and adjust it further, all I'll need to do is just ooch it in a little bit further, and I'll get a little bit higher in the band. But you can see now I'm at 14.2 really close. Now, if you're into CW, which a lot of times these uh, particular antennas are used for with QRP rigs, well, I'm, I'm right where I need to be. Now, if I go in the other direction where I'm going to be doing some CW, I still have that much to there, maybe a little less than that, for CW work. But if I go up here to where I'm going to be for single sideband, I've got until about right there. And I can, again, adjust it a little bit further with those stingers to get right where I need to be. This is where the, the uh, antenna uh, analyzer, the SWR analyzer, is a really big help because now you'll know whether or not your radio is efficiently putting out a signal because SWR is signal going out, power going out. Is any of that power coming back towards you due to inefficiencies in your antenna? Uh, among other things. And uh, in this case, if you can get an SWR in the one range, somewhere between one and two, very little power is coming back towards your radio, which could be harmful to the finals in your transmitter. Again, even with some SWR, some radios have a tuner built in where you can take care of some of that through some of the electronics built into the radio to reduce the capacitance and or the resistance in that particular band on that particular frequency. So let's go ahead and end this particular video series. The MFJ269CM is one of my trusty tools and whether it's a traveling antenna like the Octopus, whether it's a 2 meter 70 centimeter antenna just to check that the antenna is good from the factory and when it's an antenna like a multi-band vertical uh, like the AV640 from High Gain, you know, there's a place for this particular tool in every single one of those applications. Maybe at some point in the future, we'll even bring back this particular tool and talk about how to um, calculate cable efficiency, coax efficiency, um, uh, velocity factor, cable length. Do you have a short in your cable? That sort of thing. But we'll see how this particular video does. And then hopefully maybe later this year uh, sometime we'll get another video showing some of those advanced features. This is KY4 BDP Brian for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Hope you got some value from this video. Give us a like, a comment, uh, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so that as we put out new videos at least once a week typically, you'll be notified. 73s everybody.